All right, we're visiting with the new head coach and general manager of the uh, Phoenix Knights, Colton St. Clair. Colton, thanks for joining the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Tell me a little bit about growing up in Gilbert, Arizona, yeah. playing hockey, and let's let's talk a little bit about what got you going, and let's talk a little bit about your career, and then we'll talk about <laughs> that thing that's on your finger. Yeah, um, you know, it all started, uh, I was seven and a half years old, and, uh, you know, we were at the Polar Ice and Chandler, it was called Polar Ice at the time, right. uh, kind of buying some time just my sister's birthday. So we kind of, my family and I went over there and just, you know, asked how much it was to rent out the ice for a birthday party and things like that. And I saw these little kids playing. I was like, Dad, this looks awesome. You know, so <laughs> the next weekend went to public skate. I think I ended up getting a pair of skates that day. I got the hang of it and uh, played a few months of house league. And then I got asked to travel for the travel team. And then ever since then, uh, you know, just kind of kicked off and I loved it. So you play youth hockey here, Yep. then you had the opportunity to make the jump to junior hockey. Yep. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to Fargo, North Dakota and the USHL. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, such a prestigious league that, um, you know, I played 18 AAA when I was 14, okay. and uh, I kind of knew that, you know, my goal was at, you know, that 15 range, 15, 16, that if I was good enough, you know, at the time in Arizona, that's where you, when you had to leave. Right. Um, and so I chose to leave, and I ended up getting drafted by Fargo, and so, uh, you know, that didn't mean I made the team. You know, Dean Blaze calls me, you know, that uh, it doesn't mean you made it, but congrats, you know, it's the first step. So right. uh, that kind of stuck with me for a while, you know, you, you know, you still got to work hard, even though, you know, that, you know, that draft was given to me, so to speak, uh, you know, I haven't done anything yet. I ended up going to the uh, the first camp, made it after that, and uh, signed a contract with the team, and off I went, and that's, uh, you know, not so, too far from North Dakota. So. Yes. So from people that don't know, when you got to the Fargo Forest, there was a brand new building there, wasn't there? Yeah, it was brand new. It was brand new. So actually, it wasn't even uh, there wasn't even ice or anything in it yet. And I remember our team uh, going through and sweeping the floors and just kind of help out just <laughs> right. to get the you know pick up the pace. You know, our for game home opener I think was October 30th, and the season started around October 1st or October 3rd, if I remember right. And, right. Uh, so you know we're just you know hustling and trying to get ready so for the home opener. For those that don't know, I covered North Dakota hockey back then, yeah. and I remember that day. I remember watching you guys sweep yeah. up there and be, get prepared. I remember the road trip before that, yeah. before you guys had a chance to actually yeah. come and be in the home building. Now, as you watch the building itself, it's, it's hosted a couple of regionals yep. for the NCAA, yep. so it obviously was uh, kind of the Taj Mahal of USHL hockey at the time, right? Yeah, it was a really nice rink, uh, you know, especially being from, at the time, not a big hockey area, right? Uh, and then I go there and everyone talks hockey, 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 and our team's <laughs> on the news every night, you know, talking about practice, and who's right. out with an injury, so it's pretty cool to see, and then obviously that first game there sold out, you know, 5,000 people, it was, uh, you know, it was pretty awesome. I bet it was. Yeah. So tell me, when you first got there and they saw where you were from, was there a lot of talk about oh, the other players going like, what, yeah. what's this guy doing here? Yeah, who's this young kid from <laughs> Arizona coming up North Dakota to play? Uh, yeah, you know, I got asked all the time, like, do you even have hockey down there? <laughs> right. I'm like, yeah, watch me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, you yeah. know, it was kind of funny. You know, a lot of kids joked about it, but at the end, you know, there was, ended up, like, you know, my second, third year in the league, you know, there's kids from, you know, more kids from Arizona, more kids, you know, kids from Texas and areas like that, so it was really growing. And the USHL itself developed into a, it was a good league, but it's gotten better and better as you've yeah. gone along, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, even a lot of Europeans now want to come over and, you know, play in the USHL, you know, uh, so it's, it's great for colleges, too, you know, it expands, uh, you know, obviously a lot of colleges, you know, pick their players out of USHL. Right. And uh, your North American League, for that matter, and things like that, but, um, so, you know, when European kids come over to USHL, it gives these colleges a chance to see them play as, you know, and they don't have to travel all the way overseas or... Uh, you know, call someone, hey, is there some kid out there that I should look at or whatever? So it's, it makes it easier for them. Plus, I think the USHL style uh, kind of adheres to, to college, right? Yeah, it kind of preps sure. you for college. That's what their goal yeah, is. Yeah, it does. You know, it's a tough league to score in. Right. And, uh, you know, obviously you get some of those, you know, five or ten kids that just blow it out and, you know, get 70 points. And, you know, 70 points in that league is a really good year. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's like you're ready. You know, yeah. get going, pack your bags, you're going to college somewhere. So... Um, you know, it's a tough league to score in, just like most leagues in college hockey. So it's, uh, you know, it's really good prep league. So from that point, you play a few years there, and then yeah. all of a sudden you got to make a college decision. Yeah. We talked off camera about where the first <laughs> college decision was, yeah. and, and then what happened? Uh, well, it was between CC and North Dakota the whole time. And, uh, you know, I, when I went to North Dakota, <laughs> CC calls me like, hey, don't fall into those fighting Sioux fans, you know, don't, fall in, don't get peer pressured by them. And uh, I was like, oh, no, 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 I won't. But, you know, at the same time, like I said, it was between CC and North Dakota. 
and then I went to a game, and you know, like I told you earlier, you know, the atmosphere there the, right. is honestly the best fans of college hockey. You know, every player says that whatever school they go to, but these are the most passionate fans right. you, you will ever see. And, uh, and, and they fit my style of play. Right. Um, so, you know, that's something. I was young at the time. You know, my parents didn't go to uh, Division One school or play sports. So, you know, uh, they're like, hey, take this. You know, you just got to right. offer a scholarship. But, you know, I, I recommend waiting, uh, right. obviously. But, um, I mean, obviously it worked out in the end. And I would have, you know, if I would have done it all over at, you know, 15, 16 when I got for the first scholarship, I would have just stayed with North Dakota the whole time. Uh, right. So I'm glad I ended up there. And, uh, you know, that place always have a special place in my heart, for sure. So you went into Grand Forks, you went into North Dakota yeah. as a fighting Sioux. Yeah, yeah. And you left there as a uh, fighting, fighting Hawk. Sioux. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a fighting Sioux also. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell, tell me what that was like, going in there with that story tradition that they have up there in North Dakota. Yeah. And, and you're from Arizona. And yeah. First of all, you got to make an adjustment to the cold, right? I mean, <coughs> it's a little bit different yeah. weather in the wintertime than down here. Yeah, well, the first year I was in Fargo, um, there was a big flood. Right. And I think we missed a month of school. And, you know, we we're sandbagging. I go, you know, sandbag in the morning, go to practice, and help uh, my Billet family's neighborhood sandbag at night. So it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. But our team did a lot of volunteer work for it. And it was a, it was a great learning experience, honestly, to see a, a community come together like that. And, right. Um, you know, at the time, you know, everyone in Arizona, it's, it's so big, and there it's, you know, you know everyone in town and things yeah. like that, so it was, uh, it was a pretty good experience. So when you get to North Dakota and you got to fight your way onto a team, and yeah. it's a good roster, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it a good roster every year. Every year, yeah. They don't rebuild, they reload. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you go through the program, you get a chance to, uh, to play in a couple of Frozen Fours, yeah. and then you finally get a chance to win one. So let's talk a little bit about what that was like from a kid from Arizona. Yeah going to play in the national tournament and, and coming home with one of those rings you got on your fingers. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my freshman year, we lost to Yale, and they ended up winning it all that year. So right. we lost the game to go to the Frozen Four. And then, uh, you know, my uh, next three years, we went to the Frozen Four, right. so Final Four team. And then finally, um, you know, my senior year, we ended up winning the whole thing. And, uh, you know, it was pretty crazy. Like, you, at first, you know, it doesn't really sink in. You're right. just you're pumped that you won, you, you know, throwing your gloves off. and. And then, uh, you know, when I'm skating around with that trophy, I'm just like, holy, you know, we did it. You know, right, it yeah. Was, uh, you know, it was a great team that year, a great team every year, but that group of guys I was with is, uh, you know, really something special. I've never seen a group that close before on any team I've been a part of or uh, heard other players talk about, so it was really cool. And that's what it takes, isn't it? Yeah. A closeness along uh, with the talent. Not I just mean, a team, but a family. Like, right. It's got to be, it really does. You know, you got to be able to look that guy in the eye across the room and be like, okay, I gave him my all today, he gave it his all today. You know, yep. it's kind of got, you know, it's got to go around the room that way. So <coughs> you win the championship, and North Dakota had won a few before that, but it had been a while since yeah. they actually took yeah. home the title. 16 years. So so what was yeah. that like for for alumni? Were there were there people talking to you yeah, guys well, going like? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there it's, uh, you know, it's, you, you're, you're supposed to win, right. you know, when you go there. <laughs> and, uh, but I think, you know, the, the fans understand, like, they understand still. Um, it wasn't, uh, obviously, there was a little more pressure, like, hey, you know, I made it to the Frozen Four the first right. previous two years, let's uh, let's get it done, you yep. know. And and uh, that year was different. I just think everybody knew we would get it done. It was just a different, yeah. uh, it's hard to explain. Um, you know, the previous years, like, all right, you know, we're in here, let's let's do it. But throughout the whole year, I think everyone really believed that year. It's just like, hey, okay, you know what, this team's going to really do something special. And uh, I think us as a team believed it as well. You know, it wasn't a cocky thing. It was just more of a confidence and the fact that we trusted our systems and trusted each other. And uh, I think the fans just trusted us. That was kind right. of the thing. So it was uh, <laughs> I ended up working on the end. So well, I remember covering UND for four, five, six years before yeah. that. Yeah. And I remember watching the team every year start a little slow and yeah. then crescendo and crescendo. And then yeah, all of a sudden Christmas, Christmas time came. Don't lose. <laughs> Look, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's the key to that? I don't. I just think that's everybody buying in. Right. I just think that uh, you know some of the systems that we learned, they're not very complicated, but they're hard to perfect. And okay. If, you know, uh, that's what our coaches expected. Like, hey, everyone, you know, we're learning this. Like, right. Everyone needs to buy in and do it. And I just think you know everyone started belie believing more and more and more. And uh, you know, after Christmas, we're just like, we're gonna, we're gonna go. <laughs> it on was run. automatic, we're right? We're gonna go on a run. Yeah. And But that was the that year that you know we won it. We started strong the whole year. Yeah, yeah, that you know, was that was, was the exception, like, yeah, wasn't it? Was, you know, but um, usually that is how it goes. I I wouldn't say a slow start, but everyone says it's a slow start because compared to our second half, right? Like it just yep. blows it out of the water, right? And uh, you know, but at the same time, 
you know, on the NCH scene at the, when I first got there, WCHA. Yep. Any given night, really, any team can win. Right. You know, that's a, it's a tough competitive league. It's a good league. So, Very um, good league. You know, both leagues were great, and now the NCHC, you know, I think two teams this year were, you know, that were in the National Championship game were from the NCHC, so, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's a great league, a uh, very competitive league, and, you know, I recommend anyone, you know, that's a really, I honestly think that is a pro-style league, just the way you play and the way you go about your day, and each team in that league, basically, you know, you're expected <laughs> to win, you know, it's uh, just the way it is. So. And you can see guys that take the next step, Drake Cajula, yeah, guys like that, yeah. that are able to step right into yeah. the NHL, and so it really does prepare impact. you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure, you know, and then, you know, this year, you know, you had Brock Besser signing, and, and uh, Tyson Jost, and then you had, you know, Nick Schmaltz from my year, yeah. and, yep. uh, you know, Troy Stetcher, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Paul Ledoux, all you know, all right. those guys playing in the NHL from that you know national championship team, and you know Luke Johnson played a couple games, but he, you know, um, so it, it gets you ready. I mean, it really does. So let's talk about you personally. Yeah. Two shoulder injuries, a couple yeah, of shoulder yeah. surgeries, kind of derailed the, the, <laughs> the playing part of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, uh, that happens. You know, I got my degree. Yep. Um, you know, that's a big thing, and uh, you now I'm still involved in the game of hockey. And, you know, I always told myself, whenever I'm done playing, I want to be a coach. So, you know, that's, uh, there that's you go. the path I'm going on now. Awesome. The, when I cover um, ASU hockey now, and I watch what Coach Powers is doing down there, and I don't know how much you've had a chance to see them. Yeah, I've talked to him a couple years. times. So, But but I likened his season this year to a lot like a North Dakota season, yeah. where they started slowly, started they slow. built, they had yeah. a game plan, and then at the end of the year, all of a sudden, you see them knocking off Ohio State yeah. and, uh, on ESPN. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you see some things happening. So is that kind of the way you see that program, too, from the outside? Yeah, you know, it's going to happen. Like, people need to be patient. Right. I mean, that's, uh, you know, every other D1 team is established already. Right. You know, they have the guys that are saying, I want to go there, I want to go there, I want to go there. You know, until, you know, ASU, like you said, start second half, they started getting better and better, and that's just going to help their program. You know, like I said, that's the thing buying in, and those guys, I think, at the end of the year started believing. You know, they're like, hey, we're actually, D you know, we're a D1 team now. You know, we need to move forward with that. And that's kind of a, each player needs to realize that when they get there, like, hey, it doesn't matter what team I play on, whatever, it's Division One. Right. I'm here for a reason. You know, let's make this a program. And, uh, you know, Powers is doing a great job over there. So your job now here with the Phoenix Knights is, is your first big challenge in coaching, yeah, right? Yeah, GM for sure. and coaching role. Pretty much so first gig, and that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah, no, it's good. So, so tell me what the goal is for the Phoenix Knights. What are you trying to do with the kids that you have? Where do you want to see the program go? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely going to be a rebuilding year. Um, you know, I want to teach the systems at the next level. So I want to teach these kids, you know, USHL systems, right. uh, some of the basic college systems uh, so they know. And, you know, I believe that if you if you come in here and you want to win and I teach them those systems, right. they're going to be ready and they're going to be forced to be that way. Right. And so it's just kind of like, hey, you want to be, you know, be treated like a man, act like one. It's right. kind of, you know, the same thing along the same lines. And so, you know, it, it, it is going to be a rebuilding year. Um, you know, I want the team just right away, as, as long as you work hard and, and uh, put in the work, you, I mean, you can't. You can't get mad at kids for doing that, you know. Right. If you get beat on a game, you know, you just get beat. Right. But if, you, if you're, you know, turning the puck over consistently, you're, you know, you're not back checking, you're not forward checking, you're not following our systems, and we get beat, then that's our fault. You know, that's the team's fault. And so I just want them to, you know, realize that and think about these things and, you know, hold themselves accountable, uh, you know, not to put, like, too much pressure on them. Right. But it, it helps, though, if you're like, hey, you know, if, if you're a man to yourself, like, hey, I turned that puck over, right. you know, they had a good scoring chance off it, I'm not going to do it again. Right. And just don't, you know, work, not do it again. <laughs> like, it's, uh, you know, if they get that in their heads, you know, so there's little, you know, little things in the game of hockey that I like to teach these kids. There's a sign down in your North Dakota locker room. I know you've seen it a million yeah. times. It says, Speed Kills. Yeah, Speed Kills. So is that something that you're going to try to yeah. instill here with the Knights? Yeah, absolutely. I want to be a very tenacious team, but, uh, you know, crafty. I want to be a right. crafty team, let them make plays, but at the same time, you know, you got to follow the systems because guess what? When you follow the systems, you're going to create turnover, and then you get to be crafty. Right. You know, and I want just constant pressure, constant pressure. Um, you know, I, I still have an old-school mentality of, <laughs> of playing where I'm very intense, and uh, but at the same time, you know, new school development. I want to develop these kids and move them on, and uh, that's going to be my goal. And, you know, I think if all those kids are on the same page, you know, the kids are real with themselves, like, hey, you know what, I need another year here before I can go impact, be an impact player somewhere else. So so tell me, for those that don't know, or tell us, for those that don't know, um, <coughs> what age group are you working with? How are you getting your players? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with the whole program? Yeah, so it's uh, mostly 17 to 21-year-olds. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, typical junior league, just seven yep. USHL, everything like that. 
and right now like nothing's really going on as right. far as you know you know uh, tournaments and things like that but uh, I'm using my contacts just the people that I know and the people that whether they've been my coach before you know people I played against or yep. played with and um, so that's what I'm doing right now and then I got a couple uh, places I'm going to lined up here and uh, in the near future so I'll be doing that and you know making my rounds and uh, just kind of going from there. So for those that don't also know the Phoenix Knights play right here at Gilbert yep. right? Yep. right in the Gilbert Ice yep. where we're, we're filming today. Yep. So uh, what's been the reception from the community? I know you told me off yeah. camera there's a lot of kids in the building at night. Yeah. So, so how are how are people, <clears throat> first of all, receptive to you coming back? Yeah. And and second of all, to the program itself and, and where you're going? Yeah, they they're uh, they're very excited from what I hear. Uh, I don't right. know what they're saying behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, they're uh, they're they're very excited. I mean, I work with the youth programs too, so sure. it's uh, you know, I think that's important. Um, you know to have a winning team here again because then you know that gives these kids here all at right. this level to be like all right oh we're going to go to the Knights game or you know I want to play for the Knights someday and I'm going to work hard every yeah. day to do it you know obviously um, you know I thought the same thing you know when I was uh, playing out of Chandler I was a Bill family for the Polar Bears at the time right and uh, you know you're like holy smokes these guys are good you know I want to <laughs> play here and then it forced you to get better and then if you're above it go go above it you know that's uh, I'm never going to you know never hold yourself back from anything but um, I think also too, it's you know that'll help the youth program, like I said. But at the same time, you know, I'm out here with all these youth kids. You know, they're yep. you know they realize, hey, that's the junior coach, and you know, let's let's go to the game. You know, let's go let's yeah. go support. So it's good that you know, and I want the players out here on the ice too, helping the kids and practices and showing their faces and you know showing their appreciation for for the youth program with for their support. So I know it's early, but what you what you have with your roster <coughs> right now, um, let me know what. Um, what you have or, or what you're expecting with talent coming in? Uh, a brand new team. <laughs> uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't ask many guys back. And right. That's for a reason. Um, yeah. you know, I'm starting over fresh. Uh, yep. There's a few guys, uh, you know, core guys from the team last year, uh, yeah. leaders and uh, some players I thought could, you know, impact this year's team. You know, it may not be the same rule. You know, may, not be, right. may not be the skill guy. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and then I got, you know, obviously, kind of, I'm looking at a couple kids from, the team uh, two years ago okay. that played. So, like I said, right now every kid has a tryout everywhere. Right. You know, yeah. it's not till July where you know they start to weed July them down. The first of August, you know, when you're gonna, um, you know, finally have your full roster basically. But um, you know, we got our first camp June eighth. Okay. Uh, should be good. You know, it's gonna be mostly local kids. You know, right. Local kids that come out, and then uh, the main camp in August uh, will be invite only. Okay. So you know, that's kind of. So right now, I'm, uh, for the first camp, I want anybody to come out, you okay. know, show your face, you know, get it. Yep. And if you're not I'm like, hey, catch my eye, you're coming to the next camp. You know, <laughs> so it, it wouldn't, doesn't hurt, you know, like it's, uh, you know, obviously some kids you talk to, you know, you make personal calls to them, you know, like, hey, we got a camp in June, come on out. And, um, so it's, it's kind of a slow process right now, um, but I'm guessing, you know, after, especially after I go to, you know, the first couple showcases, then it's really going to yeah. start hitting off yeah. for sure. Um, there was a story recently that came out nationally that said there there wasn't enough colleges for the amount of good players that are coming in, yeah. and we need to develop college hockey. Well, obviously, ASU has got a yeah. program here. Yeah. Let's touch a little bit about what your feelings are on that. Um, obviously, I'm guessing you'd like to see some more NCAA hockey programs spring up out here in the West, right? Yeah, I mean, that'd be good. Um, you know, I still... You know, you don't want to go too crazy. <laughs> right. You don't want to water it down. Um, but at the same time, that would be good. You know, some of these bigger schools out west, you know, get a get a hockey team, you know, maybe in, uh, you know, a place like California somewhere. Right. Um, you know, places like that where, uh, you know, things that help that program are, the, you know, the nice weather. But right. at the same time, you know, look how many kids come out of California. Oh, wow. So yeah. many kids out of California. And just think, you know, how those kids will shoot up. You yeah. know, like, all right, I'm going to play for that team. You know, it gives these kids a little incentive to, you know, push themselves. At the same time, you know, I know if, uh, you know, it's just like I, you know, lived in North Dakota the past, you know, eight years, and I came back here, I was like, oh, no snow. You know, <laughs> no snow. So, you know, sometimes that that honestly impacts a player. Right. Like, you know what, I've lived 18 years of my life, 19 years of my life in the snow. Yep. I want to go to a prestigious hockey program in nice weather. You Not know, really. that, that, you know, that, Players think about that stuff. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's the truth. Well, so. number twelfth uh, ranked class in recruiting class in the country is yeah. coming to, yeah. right down the street. Yep. yep. So that's saying something. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna touch a couple of things that, that probably are uncomfortable topics. But first of all, let's talk about the women's team in North Dakota. What was your yeah. feeling when you heard that that program going by the wayside? 
Yeah, it was uh, it was unfortunate. Um, you know, I'm good friends uh, with a lot of those girls, so yeah. it's uh, you know I know they were all upset. Now I guess now they have to go from a place that was you know special in their heart, like Grant, like you know hockey is hockey there. You yeah, know, they yep. you know everybody loves hockey there, so it's uh, it's tough. Now they got to find a different place to play. You know they got to transfer credits. You know to go to a different school, or yep. you know some of them probably aren't even playing now. Like their dreams are just right. gone. So uh, you know it's a tough situation. Um, but you know, like I said, you know, and not it is what it is, but it's it's just a very unfortunate situation. And, and, diffi I, and difficult I there, I'm sure. And yeah. Because that's that's what it is, right? In the yeah. wintertime in North Dakota yeah, and Grand Forks, exactly. it's hockey, men's and women's. Well, right? I mean, I think you know the women's hockey, like the youth hockey, there is growing. All right. So now you get all these, you know, you know, you get a lot of girls from Minnesota too coming over that can't make, you know, yep. go gophers and things like that, and you know now those girls can't go as close to home and now they got to go somewhere else and it makes you think you know what other programs are in jeopardy now uh, right. around the country for women's hockey so it's you know it's an unfortunate situation I feel for them but um, you know hopefully they can they can move forward and continue their career somewhere else. So on the flip side of that we've got ASU having a, a women's yeah. ACHA program now yeah. and Grand Canyon is rivaling them with a new program yeah. coming in this year yeah. so so there is some things going with the women's side too yeah. right? Yeah for sure I mean you know there's a uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities still for women, you know, the athletes out there, and it's great to see, especially now, I think, you know, when I was growing up, you know, you didn't really hear girls saying, oh, I'm going to go play this sport in D1, I'm going to go play this sport, and now that's all you hear. Yeah, you hear all these right. girls, and, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, a Division One volleyball player, I'm going to go play golf, even, you know, hockey, you know, football, yep. soccer, you know, um, so it's, uh, it's great to see all these girls have goals as well. Final thing we'll touch on at the professional level. Yeah. Obviously, you didn't quite get to achieve that yeah. that goal and that yeah. part of your dream, I'm sure. Yeah. But but now the Golden Knights are coming into Vegas, yeah. and the Coyotes still having a few little arena struggle type yeah. things. But what, what's your thoughts on uh, professional hockey? Not only them, but the Roadrunners down in Tucson. So, how do you feel being nearly at that level with uh, what's going on in the Desert Southwest professionally? Yeah, I mean uh, the team in Tucson is great. Uh, you know that because there's not a lot of youth hockey in Tucson yeah and uh, you know if you get that that city rising uh, with hockey and um, you know a team like that helps you know, right. I, I've heard they're a good time I've been to, the, to any of the games I know the trainer and things like that but um, you know as far as the Coyotes are you know they're, they've had struggles for a while now <laughs> and uh, hopefully you know it gets figured out because I know you know especially once they do get figured out and that's you know gonna bring more people to the games and, and things like that and then, uh, like Vegas, they're making a jump. They're right. pushing, you know, we, we are in our league plays uh, right there in Las Vegas Forum. I think they're the junior Knights now. Yeah. yeah, I think Knights they are, yes. Yeah, yeah, so you got a little competition. A little close to our name, but no, it's, uh, it's all good. But, you know, so they're already making a push to junior team as so right. for the NHL team. And when we went there for the showcase, they like that. They had big banners of, you know, let's, you know, let's go to hockey. Yeah, let's go to hockey. Yep. And, uh, you know, you got to think, you know, when I was growing up, I had my idols in the NHL, and you know, I'm going to play just like that guy. You know, that's what all these kids are going to do. And uh, so, like I said, gives kids another incentive. Uh, you know, well, it wouldn't be the end of an interview without having something going on in the yeah. background. The guys got to get their work done, yeah, right? for sure, yeah. So, before we go, put that thing up there. Let's let's show that thing off. This is an Arizona kid right here that, that went and got the big ring, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so yeah, much for your time. We're going to be around all season yeah, long. So. Sure. Appreciate good. it. Good luck in your first season here. Yeah, thanks for having me on.